the government here is rolling out a big testing program to look at the antibodies that people produce after they've been infected. And we actually don't know yet whether or not those antibodies will protect you against being reinfected. So we are gathering the data. We're, you know, testing a lot of people, millions of people will be tested under this program. Um, but we don't know if those antibodies that are generated after you've been infected are going to prevent you from being infected again, which is also important because it does mean that we don't know if the vaccines that introduce, that encourage those antibodies to be produced are going to work. So we, we're hopeful they will, and we're hopeful they'll give some protection initially, at least. But at the moment, there's not clear evidence that the antibodies will protect against being reinfected with the virus. So as we as we look at this uh, this new protective coating technology um, that you've been involved in, uh, Viruferin, should we anticipate that this kind of coating should now be applied to face masks and screens and any materials that are likely to come into contact with an infected individual? No, not um, this particular product or any specific product. What we need to be encouraging people to do is realise that this virus is not spread through the air, um, particularly. It can be. There's a reason for, you know, one or two metre rules, six feet, whatever. Those rules exist for a reason. The virus is um, particularly spread by touch. So if you touch one surface, you then touch another surface and then you touch your face. And then you'll be surprised the number of times you touch your face um, in any period of time. So these sorts of compounds, whether they be um, this particular protein covering, if that helps, whether it be um, a silver ions, whether it be all sorts of other coatings, they may help. The key thing, though, is face masks and face coverings and wearing those and it's important to understand that wearing a face covering is not particularly protecting yourself it's protecting people from you because if an infected person is wearing one they are much less likely to infect another person so you're not passing on the virus to another person now ultimately that of course protects you because you're not that unlikely to catch it from another person in the future and so you actually contain the virus so it's important that people understand that the face coverings are not there to in protect the individual as much as to protect the community they're part of. So while wearing a face covering um, and using PPE and using hand sanitizers, all of those things, they're protecting at the community level. They're keeping the virus down. And all the time we keep the virus down, we protect the individual. Um Dr. Lampkin Williams, as, as we try to grapple with understanding this, this virus, there are constantly new aspects to it. And one of the reports that I read yesterday that I think was in the Lancet Psychiatry Journal suggested that um, an altered mental state has been seen in some acute COVID patients. There have also been uh, strokes. The, the virus itself seems to take on many different forms and have many different consequences for, for individuals here. And as you pointed out, we have no knowing whether we will actually get a, a, a proper vaccine and whether we can find uh, the right combination of medication uh, to, to stop this thing. Um, what then does that imply for the way that we now look at the reopening of our economies and we think about the proximity that people can experience with each other? Well, interesting, we're going through, as most states in the US and across Europe, they're going through these decisions at the moment. We can't keep our economies locked down in the way they are. Um, it's not good for the economy and it's not good for people individually as well because mental health is an extremely important component of anybody's welfare. So we have to learn some ways to live with the virus. Um, we're relaxing some of our social restrictions. Um, we're encouraging people, though, to maintain that hand sanitising, keep your distance, whatever those recommendations will be. All of those things are important. The vaccine is not going to be a cure-all. Um, you know, we have not had a successful vaccine against this type of virus ever. And we have not had a vaccine with using the predominant technologies. I believe there are 13 vaccine trials 
underway at the moment and several hundred um, being planned. Um, so, you know, we will get a vaccine of some description in the next couple of years, but it will not be perfect and it will need to be developed going forward. So keeping to the advice, the restrictions that are given locally and, you know, face masks and face coverings. I prefer to use the word face covering because that's the less people fiddle around with things, the less people, you know, touch their face, the better it is because that's a real big way of transmitting the virus. So a comfortable fitting face covering is a very useful thing to do. But we're going to have to adapt to that. And nobody should think that by Christmas it's all going to be back to normal because, you know, in the Western Hemisphere, the Northern Hemisphere particularly, um, you know, we've got normal colds and the flu about to arrive. So we're going to have this and two more respiratory diseases affecting us.